Good day. This is ASEAN News for today. China launches new meteorological satellite in orbit in Sichuan province. China sent a new meteorological satellite into planned orbit from the Sichuan Satellite Launch Center in Sichuan province. The launch center says the satellite Fengyun 4B or FY 4B was launched on a Long March 3B rocket at 17 minutes past 00, 00 Beijing time. This was the 372nd flight mission of the Long March rocket series. The first of China's new generation meteorological satellites in geostationary orbit, the FY4B will be used in the fields of weather analysis and forecasting as well as environmental and disaster monitoring. The satellite and rocket are developed by the Shanghai Academy of Space Flight Technology and the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology respectively. Both belong to the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation. The China Meteorological Administration is responsible for the construction and operation of the satellite's ground application system. Search team continues to search person missing in Indonesia verifier. The local official says search and rescue teams are looking for a person still missing after hundreds were rescued from a passenger ferry that caught fire in Indonesia's Molucca Sea. Passenger ferry KM Karya Inda was traveling in a remote part of Indonesia archipelago from Ternate in the province of North Maluku towards Sanana on the island of Sulabes when the fire broke out. Dramatic footage from Indonesia's search and rescue agency show the vessel engulfed in smoke and part of the ship ablaze as passengers in life vest jumped from the deck to lifeboats. In addition, Search and rescue official says 274 people had been rescued from the vessel without the injury and taken to a nearby village while one person was still missing. Initial reports suggest the fire may have started in the engine room, Indonesian official says. They are investigating the cause of the incident. A tornado appears on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. A tornado hit the rural area of Philippines' main island of Luzon. Video show a funnel cloud spewing dust and dirt near a field in the town of Tumawini in Isabela province. In addition, a media report says it lasted for about half an hour and at one point caused a power cut. According to disaster officials cited in the report, there were not any injuries record. In this event, does not result in damage in the country. Japan's government spokesman rejects South Korea's protest over disputed island on Olympic map. Japan's top government spokesman rejects South Korea's protest against the map on the Tokyo Olympics website that show a set of South Korea controlled islands as Japanese territory and the International Olympics Committee adds the map is an objective one. The small islands called Stokdo in South Korea and Takeshima in Japan have been at the center of a decades long territorial dispute between the two countries. A public uproar arose in South Korea after the islands are marked on the map of Japan on the Tokyo Olympics website showing the road of the torch relay. A Facebook video obtained by Reuters shows three South Korean students are arrested after burning Japan's rising sun flag in a protest outside the Japanese embassy in Seoul. According to the media reports, the three are detained on charges of violating assembly and demonstration slows and around a dozen other members of a student group gather outside the police station to protest against the arrest. 
South Korean Sports Authority sent a letter to Olympics chief president Thomas Park asking him to mediate a Seoul's complaint. The Korean Sports and Olympic Committee letter argued that South Korea took steps to remove the disputed islands from a flag featured at the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang after Japan complained. Vietnam records new virus carps in its capital after the factories in North reopen. The state media VTV reports the business hub of Ho Chi Minh City in the south began enforcing new social distancing measures to curb the spread of COVID-19 in Ho Chi Minh City for 15 days after the cases increases in the country. New cases increases because of the reopening of the Bac Giang Industrial Province in northern Vietnam. Bac Giang, northeast of Hanoi, has been an epicenter of new outbreak of COVID-19 that began last month. The province is home to factories that are suppliers for electronic companies such as Apple and Samsung. The VTV media adds 4,000 factory workers are screened and vaccinated for the virus before returning to production lines. According to VTV, policemen knew checkpoints and students vacate a dorm to make way for a 6,000-bed field hospital. According to the government's statement, the city has seen a rise in cases related to a religious mission that has recorded at least 125 positive tests. After successfully containing the virus for most of last year, infections in Vietnam have risen since late April, accounting for more than half of the total 7,107 registered cases among its population of 98 million. It still has one of the world's lowest case loads, with a total of 47 deaths so far. European Union imposes new sanctions on Myanmar junta. European Union Foreign Affairs Chief Josef Borrell told Reuters that the European Union will impose a new round of sanctions on Myanmar's military junta and its economic interests in the coming days. In an interview in Jakarta after meetings with Southeast Asian diplomats, Borrell says the fresh sanctions from the European Union will be the third batch introduced since the military ousted Myanmar's democratically elected government on February 1st. Since the coup, European Union sanctions have frozen assets or applied travel bans on 21 military and civilian members of Myanmar's junta. And I told clearly what uh, the European Union has always been saying that uh, the, the European Union sanctions, along with those of other Western powers, have yet to persuade the junta to cede their demands on restored democracy, release political detainees, or begin dialogue with members of the ousted government, many of whom are imprisoned. The coup plunges Myanmar into crisis after 10 years of tentative steps towards democracy. Mass demonstrations have met with a deadly crackdown by security forces and the economy has collapsed. A refugee crisis is growing and some of Myanmar's many ethnic armed groups are taking up arms against the junta. While in Jakarta, Borel met with envoys from countries in the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations the headquarters of ASEAN, which includes Myanmar as one of its ten members, is based in the Indonesian capital. Borrell tells Myanmar representative to ASEAN to end repression and go back to normal political behavior through free and fair elections. Two senior ASEAN officials are heading to Myanmar to meet with the junta, the first visit by the bloc's representatives since the coup was launched. United States urges Myanmar releases journalists detained in Myanmar. It's been a long time. Good to see everyone. The United States reiterated its concern over the detention of American citizens Daniel Fenster and Nathan Mong working as journalists in Myanmar and called again for their release. Uh, and Nathan Mong, um, both of whom were working as journalists. Uh, Speaking at the briefing, State Department spokesman Ned Price says United States consular officers have conducted a virtual visit with Hmong and had sought to visit Fengster, but Myanmar's junta had not granted access. Malaysia implements two weeks of national lockdown to prevent a spike of COVID-19 in the country. A 
A new two-week lockdown came into force in Malaysia as the Southeast Asian country battled its worst outbreak of the coronavirus since the start of the pandemic. Police set up roadblocks in the capital of Kuala Lumpur and surrounding areas to screen people for traveling without permits as the new restrictions came into effect. Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin describes the curbs as a total lockdown, though essential services are allowed and parts of Malaysia's manufacturing sector are also permitted to keep operating, though with reduced workforce capacity. Malaysia reported 7,105 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total number of infections recorded in the country to 579,462. United States approved Sinovac vaccine to fight COVID-19 pandemic worldwide. Siddharth Chatterjee, the United Nations resident coordinator in China during an exclusive interview with China Global Television Network in China says, vaccines as a global public good is very important to the global fight against COVID-19 and the country's experience is worthy of studying by the rest of the world. Chatterjee's comment came after the World Health Organization's decision to grant emergency use approval to a COVID-19 vaccine produced by Chinese drug maker Sinovac Biotech, terming it the only way to bring an end to the pandemic. I myself got the Sinovac vaccine even before WHO approved it and I've got both my shots and I, and I feel a sense of great confidence. But I also want to take this opportunity to thank China's using the vaccine as a global public good. And I think that's very important, you know, what it has done in terms of the generosity of contributing close to 600 million doses of vaccines all across the world is very commendable. We need more vaccines in people's arms. That's the only way we will finally end this pandemic. Chatterjee emphasizes that the most important thing for the international community right now is to collaborate and end the pandemic when asked the comment on the U.S. suggestion to restart the virus investigation in Wuhan. The UN coordinator spoke highly of China's quick public health response against the pandemic, and he adds that the Chinese experience not only in the field of pandemic elimination but also achieving sustainable development goals is worth of study by the international community. Thai government receives the return of the ancient lintel from the United States, which was stolen a thousand years ago. The Thailand government held a welcome ceremony for the return of two ancient lintels that had been smuggled out of the country to the United States. The thousand-year-old lintels were stolen from Nong Hong and Kao Luang sanctuaries and displayed at Asian Arts Museum in San Francisco, and Thailand demanded the return of the artifacts. The two Khmer-style stone carvings will be on display at the Bangkok National Museum for the next three months. The government will then decide whether they should be returned to their original sanctuaries. Well, thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a lovely day.